Today's a very special day. If you saw the title of this video, you know today's the day I get my first look at the Yeti SB140 Lunch Ride. Before we dive into the bike, I wanna give a big thanks to my friends at Jensen USA who sponsored this video. Jensen is a top online retailer for mountain bikes, parts and accessories. They're here in the United States of America and they're a dealer for Yeti cycles. I am also supported by P&W Components and Industry 9. I've got a link to the SB140 over at Jensen USA. The link's in the description below. Anything you purchase from that link will directly help support my efforts in making videos like this, so thanks in advance. And finally, this bike is a loaner bike, so this is not something I get to keep in exchange for a video or anything like that. I haven't seen this thing yet besides like a quick photo in the media press kit, so let's have some fun, pop this box open, and take a gander. Just kidding, it's not that heavy. Let's see what we got. Ooh. Not the bike. Here we go, the big moment. The new SB140 lunch ride. Oh, it looks like a bike in packaging. So this bike has a full SRAM build kit on it. I am actually a little tempted to try it. And this is also the AXS system. So it checks your email every time you go to shift. If you guys have been watching my channel for a while, you saw that I was riding an SP130 lunch ride last year for quite a while. And I liked it a lot. So much in fact that we bought one. My daughter's mother is now riding an SP130 that we straight up bought from Jensen USA. So I was stoked when Yeti reached out and said, hey, do you want to ride the new version of the SP130? There's a bunch of cool updates, but they're pretty subtle if you're not like intimately familiar with the Yeti platform. So the SB140, formerly the 130, it's like the mid-travel, heavy-duty trail, almost light enduro category bike. It competes directly with like a stump jumper. Evil offering, an Ibis Ripmo, Orbea Occam. Yeah, this is a great kind of bike for the kind of riding that I personally most enjoy doing, which is like legit mountainous rides where you can kind of send it on the down, but you've got to cover 20, 30 miles to do your loop. So what's so new and great about the 140? Well. A whole bunch of stuff. It, nothing is drastically changed from the old platform, which is good because it works so well. Similar geometry. The bike did grow by about 10 millimeters. The bearings now press into the linkages as opposed to the carbon. There's an expanding collet system for all the pivot hardware, which is supposed to be more precise with better tolerances than the prior system. Switch Infinity got a new type of seal on it, and some of the other bearings have a new seal as well. Huge update for everyone universal derailleur hanger. One other cool detail that doesn't affect me at all, at five foot eight, but if you're really, really, really tall, there's now a double XL frame size. So Yeti's now making five sizes as opposed to just the old four. Frame sizes now have size specific chainstay lengths. So the size medium here has a 438 mil chainstay. Going down to a size small, you get two millimeter shorter. Size large would be a 440, so two mils longer and upwards until you get to the double XL size. So for the past three years or so, whenever I've tested a bike, I've swapped a few parts out to make them consistent with everything else I've been riding. I'm tempted to throw on my Industry 9 Enduro 315C wheels. It's a carbon rim with a super high engagement Industry 9 hub. The stock DT Swiss wheels are really, really good wheels, but I have this long relationship with Industry 9 and I've used those wheels on every bike, so I just wanna keep it consistent. And then I'm gonna swap the handlebars, stem, seat post over to my usual P&W components items. And Yeti did update the seat tube on the 140 series of bike. So now they're saying that a size medium frame can fit a 175 mil drop for most riders. I was able to fit a 200 mil drop on my SB130 lunch ride, so I'm sure I can fit a full 200 on this new version. I think it's time to start wrenching and get this thing built into a mountain bike that we can go hit some trails with. Let's get to it. I'm right at 200. Sweet. So we just pedaled up here, pretty sweaty day here, forest fire smoke all around us. Uh, normally when I film on bikes, I like ride them a little bit and set them up correctly and get used to them. So then our shots can be more exciting because I'm not like, I don't know what I'm doing. 
But today we're not doing that. Today we are doing very first ride. So let's try some trail. First trail on the SP140. Let's see how it goes. When this bike arrived, we were still in late summer with fast, very dry, and very dusty conditions. It's worth mentioning that a lot of newer Fox suspension needs some time to properly break in. Well, the combination of still brand new suspension and the harsher 32 spoke wheels and, well, I'll admit, I didn't quite feel like everything was meshing as well as I'd been hoping. I do really enjoy big old 2.6 size tires when our trails are this blown out or in more rugged backcountry type situations. I was trying out a set of 2.6 size Schwalbe tires and on the first ride, they felt pretty darn good. On the second ride, I hit a root and tore the bead of the rear tire. So I gave up that 2.6 idea and went back to the same 24 spoke wheel set I loved on the SP130, along with the same double down spec Maxxis tires. While these aren't as predictable or supportive in the dry as the wider options, I do have a bit more trust in the Maxxis double down or WTB tough casings than I do in any other tire option at the moment. Now, will these changes be just what I need to feel a bit more comfortable? Well, let's find out. With dense smoke in the air, it was time to go someplace that might possibly be a little bit cleaner. Is this how you do this? Oh, oh, oh. I think that's how it goes, right? So as you know, my entire YouTube channel is basically an excuse to just go mountain biking and have fun. In this bike review, well, it's disguised as a bike review, I wanted to come to one of my favorite trails and give it a final season ending shakedown. The forest fires all over the state, smoke's definitely everywhere. It's not the healthiest time to be out, but I'd rather ride than not. Today, we've been climbing about 3,000 feet so far. Now we're on the single track descent and it um, was supposed to rain earlier and make this trail perfect, but we're still in the midst of summertime dust. And it's not like a little, it's like six inch moon dust. We have some fun stuff to look forward to up here and I'll try to let you guys know how things are going with my beloved beast, the Yeti SB140. These hunting and hiking style trails are where I personally most enjoy mountain biking. This seems like exactly the sort of terrain Yeti were thinking about when they designed the SB140 platform. It's also the exact terrain I was thinking about when I was contemplating where to manual. The older platform had slightly shorter chain stays and a slightly shorter reach. As a result, it was a tad easier to initiate a manual once the SB140 is on the rear wheel, it balances quite well. As for the wheel swap, that was a very positive change. I still don't think the fork in particular was broken in yet when we filmed all this, but when it's dry and dusty, that isn't that big of a deal. But as you can tell, I was beginning to feel quite a bit better on the SB140 since that first ride. All right, here we go. What's on the other side of the saddle? Oh my goodness, the Stewart range. Wow, that is spectacular. Holy moly. Last night before going to bed, I was trying to figure out what our plan was for today. So I gave mother nature a phone call and asked, hey, what's going on tomorrow with weather? And she just replied, you know what? You don't need to worry about it. Just go to your bike ride and hope for the best and you'll have an adventure. Uh, we've made it over three different saddles to get here today. We've been through snow, we've been through sun. I've been the coldest I've been in probably six months. And I've been pretty <laughs> grateful to actually see that amazing rock formation behind us. I've used all three jerseys I brought with me. I've seen Logan in four different jackets so far, including gardening gloves, pretty epic. Anywhere behind me here is illegal to ride a bike because that's wilderness. This way though, game on. Appreciate that view one more time. Try to remember it. Let's get shreddy. With more time on the new SB140, I started to learn that the faster you go, the better the bike feels. When it comes to cornering, it's easy to really lean the thing over. And once it is leaned over, it has a little bit more forgiveness than the older SB130 did. I think that's due to the slightly longer wheelbase. At first, I built the bike with a 45 millimeter long PNW Components range stem. After the first few rides, I decided to go a little bit shorter. With that long reach measurement, I was able to hop off of things when I had a little bit of a kicker naturally in the trail, but I wasn't quite able to bunny hop it as easily as the older model. With the increased reach, I figured going down to a 40 mil stem would take care of this. I also noticed that the front fork still wasn't quite broken in. 
In fact, it didn't feel better at all. It almost felt a little bit worse. So I think it's actually a warranty issue with the bushings on my particular fork here. I don't hesitate to recommend Fox to anyone. I think it's a great brand. Unfortunately, I got a dud. So I tossed on a spare fork I have on hand here. And I think that fork would be a great fit for the next spot. We're gonna take the SP140. Every bike basically is a story in itself. The story of this bike has been progressing significantly. So to complete the trifecta of possible weather conditions, we made up here to the Vancouver North Shore to a very famous old school trail. I've read about this trail in magazines since I was a kid. So I'm pretty excited to check this trail out. Let's drop in and uh, try out a very new, very modern bike on a very classic old school North Shore trail. The SP140 was right away starting to feel quite a bit better. However, more importantly, I was learning to how to better ride the bike. With the subtle changes, the bike rides better the harder you push into it. The more you ask of it, the better it does. This means that yes, you can ride it pretty quick through some pretty gnarly stuff. I remember noticing this at the old SP130, but the trade is amplified with the new design. Every bike is definitely a bit of an adventure. As I've been dialing this thing in, confidence has been getting quite a bit higher and the latest little series of changes definitely opened up the doors of what this bike can do. So we're out here riding Severed D as the PC folks likes to call it. And uh, I've wanted to ride that trail for years. Well, it's kind of a downhill trail. You're pounding and smashing through rocks, pretty straight line, pretty fast. King Neptune has changed locales and is located right above us and he's raining down lots of H2O into the forest. There's over an inch or 2.54 centimeters, if you're local, of precipitation happening right now. So yeah, uh, that's definitely a test of this bike's straight line brrr, ability through them rocks. I like to kind of weave my way through those rocks a bit, sometimes kind of jump through them. The SP140 can definitely do that. And I'm still trying to get as comfortable on this as I was on the old bike. I found a few fun little jibber popper lines on the side of the trail and in the main trail and you know started getting comfortable enough to go for that stuff and traction is at an all-time low right now because of the amount of rain on all the roots and everything i still have my summer tires on here i meant to swap out this rear this aggressor over to a dissector in the max grip compound haven't had a chance yet we got to this really cool finishing line on sever d and like Immediately, we were joking about, oh, someone who's really gnarly could jump and set the landing gear down and land you all through that. And then we rode it and all the traction on the dirt was actually really good. So came back through and like carefully tried it again. And then finally, third time's the charm, sent it and got the land you all landing gear technique on that little step down route, which was really cool. Uh, through all the wet roots and stuff, the amount of traction this bike has up front is really good. Anytime you get a coil fork on wet roots, you've made a pretty good choice in your life. On the wet roots, yeah, that fork was definitely a worthwhile swap out for today. In back, the traction game, it's hard for me to tell because I'm still on that summer tire and it does slide a bit. When there's a corner or something, I can kind of push on it a little and it does break out, but it's pretty predictable. Before we skedaddled out of here, we wanted to hit a trail that Cooper from the NSMBA actually showed us. It's called Boogie Nights. Kona Bicycles actually advocates and maintains and builds this trail, and it is super fun. Uh, it's fairly advanced, it's a jump trail, and I really like it because the jumps are a little bit steeper than on most mountain bike trails. And they're also spaced like two bike lengths further than most mountain bike trail jumps would be spaced, which is awesome because if you want to boost them or like do something in the air, you have to in order to clear them because you kind of got to reach a little bit. I had a few hard compression cases today and I can feel it in my spine. This thing on the jumps and stuff, it's so long, it's quite stable at those bigger speeds. The frame is definitely not as stiff torsionally as some of the burlier bikes, but it's not a wet noodle by any means. The 24 spoke wheels are a good match with the frame so far. Now that I've got the front end figured out, I'll try some stiffer wheels and see how that feels on jumps. I won't come back to this trail, but we have lots of jumps in our hometown, so that won't be a problem. When it comes to the bike's rear suspension performance, well, I really, really quite like it. On the SB130, that leverage ratio was amazing. There wasn't a single volume reducer in that DPX2, and I loved how progressive that bike felt. On the SB140, progression is similar, though the Float X is spec for the 0.2 volume reducer from the factory. This means I've got enough support that I can push into lips to clear these relatively long jumps, and when I do case, it's not an uncontrolled bottom out. And now we've been out here a whole day, so it's time to head home, warm up, and dry out. So. With all that, I'll check in with you guys later. Peace. Oh.
Well, hello there, everyone. Howdy. In order to do this fine SB140 justice, I thought it'd be fun to come up here to a spot that I've hardly ever ridden at all. Just made a few changes to the SB140 with Shimano brakes, Shimano drivetrain, and I'm really excited to get this thing on some slamming good fun trail, which is right over there. It's got like another 20 minutes of pushing through the snow left to make it to the top. Let's pop up there. Everyone say thanks to Logan for pushing the other bike up here so we can make this video. I really like being 100% transparent in these videos. With the SB130, I got incredibly lucky in that the very first build iteration was a total home run and I felt very comfortable right out of the box. With the SB140, I had a few little growing pains as I was trying to set it up. I was expecting it to be almost the same as the SB130 because the changes aren't that big. However, maybe I've changed, maybe conditions are different, I don't know, but once I worked through my few little hiccups, once I got the handlebars a little bit higher up with more spacers under the stem, shorter stem, swapped over to my preferred components and controls, everything started to feel really good. I'm now looking forward to really enjoying pedaling out some longer rides on this bike, and it's quite capable in the steep descents. I think for many of you that like a long travel trail bike that can handle near enduro level trails, something like the SB140 can make a lot of sense. I want to give a big thanks to Jensen USA for making this video possible. They're a dealer for Yeti, and I've got a link to the SB140 down in the description down below. I'm also supported by PNW Components and Industry 9. I want to give a big thanks to all of you for watching this video, for sharing your comments down below, and without your support, I couldn't be here in the first place. I also want to thank Logan for coming out and filming in the terrible, terrible cold, and also Riley for his help in editing. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you in the comments down below. Peace and wheelies. Goodbye, everyone.